Hey guys, welcome to part nine of our series, It's Not Up To You. Today I just want to share some possibly hard truth. I, I just want to challenge everybody and say, what are the measurables that are in our heads and in our conversation when it comes to evaluating whether or not our lives are being blessed by God? Isn't it true for many of us that we think, if we don't have the amount of money that we think we need or the home that we think we need or we're not doing as well in our job as we think we should be um, or let's say we're in ministry okay we're a pastor or something like that and we haven't yet written a best-selling book or our congregation you know the number of people in our church building is not enough to fill the room or we think in order to be able to check off the box and say we've arrived means that we have a new building plan, right? And not only a new building that we're building, but there's a second campus location. You know, our, our ministry and our impact and the effectiveness of what God is doing through us is exploding in such a way that, you know, it's, it's overflowing. You know, the abundance is overflowing. Our cup is overflowing. All these things are just happening in such an amazing way. That is proof. That is the measurable, right, of the blessing of God. And I just want to say that's not what God that I see. That's not what God says to us in the Bible that I see. You know, the measurable, the proof of living a life that is in line with God, that is obedient to God, the proof of that, the measure of that is not in that type of blessing that I see. There are some people in the Bible who, will, who were blessed in that way by God, who, who had riches, who had power, who had impact, who had tons of people following them. Those are people like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and a lot of the kings who obeyed God. But when the prophets came along, when, when God had prophets, right? We're talking about Samuel, Elijah, Elisha, many others. When the disciples came along that Jesus brought along, as well as Paul, those people did not live lives that were full of the blessing that I just talked about. They weren't full of riches, okay? These were not rich people. They didn't have big houses and drive nice cars, right? In terms of their ministry, they weren't building buildings upon buildings. Yes, in Acts, that, that many people came to uh, believe in Jesus, you know, very immediately, but they went through very challenging and trying times. There was just enough, you know, for for each person as they lived their lives. I mean, Paul spent most of his life, we know, suffering and in jail or on the run or whatever it might be. Elijah, Elijah was on the run all the time. I'm in 1 Kings chapter 17 through 19 right now. There are three times when Elijah ate. He ate when a raven brought him food. He ate when he had to take some food from a widow and her son, and all she had was enough for the rest of that day, just for her and her son. But he said, feed me some first. And then God miraculously made it be enough, you know, for Elijah, the widow and her son, you know, for a certain number of days. And then Elijah had to be fed, which is really cool, by an angel. And an angel didn't just say, hey, you know, here's some manna falling from heaven and go down to this little stream and you can cup your hand and kind of drink out of it like this. An angel literally like cooked for him. Um, it says in verse six of chapter 19 that Elijah looked around and there beside his head was some bread baked on hot stones and a jar of water. The angel had given him a jar of water and, and he gave him this food. And it says in verse eight, he got up and ate and drank and the food gave him enough strength to travel for 40 days and 40 nights. And, and then it gets to a place where Elijah is actually saying to God, God, I don't want to live anymore. I'm the only one like this. Elijah did miraculous things in his life. He, he raised someone from the dead. He was fed by God. And yet he lived an existence that we would evaluate today if we were looking at his ministry, if we were looking at his life. And we would say, man, Elijah, maybe... Maybe you're missing something. I mean, maybe you need to go on a different path or something, you know, or maybe you're not being obedient in your life, or maybe there's some hidden sin, you know, or maybe you just didn't hear God's voice because you're not being blessed. You know, there's not, you know, there's nothing about you. There's no label I can put on you like mega church pastor, or CEO of your own business you started that's, you know, making tons of money or whatever it might be. There's nothing I can point to and measure and say, oh, you must be in God's will. You know, that's the life Elijah lived, a life that we would look at and go, huh, you know, maybe you need to do something different. And and he thought at many times he should do something different. In fact, at one point he thought he should die because he was sick of all of it. And yet he was right in the heart of God's will. 
And yet when Jesus was on earth and he went up to meet with two people from heaven, one of them was Elijah. And when Jesus came, some of the people said, oh, it must be Elijah who's come back. Elijah was revered, right? You know, God used his life in such a powerful and an incredible way. I just want to encourage everybody, you know, the measure of your life and your success is not the money in the bank account. It's not what you've accomplished. It's not the number of people in the room, you know, listening to you. It's not your, your role in the company. It's none of those things. It's your relationship with God. It's your intimacy with Him. It's your heart for Him and your love for others. And that's it. I want to encourage you that you don't have to look around and compare and say, well, man, maybe I'm doing something wrong if I don't have what they have. No. If you have Jesus, if you have a relationship with God, that's all he's asking for. Dig into that, press into that, and know that there's so many great men and women of God who, who had just enough every day in their lives, and that's what God chose. And, and really all they needed was Jesus, and that's all we need. And the rest is up to God. And let's just trust him for that and rejoice in him for that today.